In this video, we're going to review the 2021 Giant Fathom 2 in the 29 version. Hey guys, welcome to our channel where we're all about finding little adventures in every aspect of life, whether it be biking or hiking, foodie adventures, backyard, or even any kind of travel. Now, I am an older rider, but I love all kinds of biking. I love road biking, I love mountain biking, bike packing, riding the trails and things like that, but I'm not a racer. And so if you're into the non-competitive side of biking and those are top things that you're interested in, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button or the like button. That would help us out a lot. So I wanna start by saying thank you to our local bike shop here in Milton, Florida, Truly Spoken. Uh, Mark let me borrow this bike in order to do this review. And this is a great bike, the 2021 Giant Fathom 2 in the 29. Now, before we get started with all of the wonderful features and components of this bike, let's answer the question that most people find the most important whenever they're buying a new bike is certainly my question is how does this bike ride? How does it feel? Okay, y'all, that is a fun, cool bike. Well guys, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the Giant Fathom 2. This thing is really comfortable. Uh, came out here to one of our local trails and nothing too technical or anything like that, but just to get an idea how it feels. And it is very stable, very comfortable. This has a longer wheelbase than what I'm used to and you could tell the stability. In fact, I was filming with one hand and steering with the other and I never felt uh, too twitchy or out of control. It always felt very balanced. Uh, the little bit of descent that I had and even the climbing uh, always stayed real balanced and so it was very comfortable. Uh, man, it's just, it's a great bike. Well man, that was a lot of fun. I'll tell you, I had a blast riding this bike today. Now I'm going to give you a regular guy's review. I'm not a professional racer or a professional mountain biker by any means. I just love bikes. And so let's start with what I believe is one of the first things that, that strikes people and that is aesthetics. How does the bike look and how does it feel? Well, first of all, this bike is beautiful. This particular color scheme, for example, that they have on this is called a black and blue ash. And it's got a lot of great 
uh, features as far as the colors and the way they've done it going from this black into this blue it looks great in the sunshine the other thing too is like i said i love all kinds all kinds of biking and i just like the shape of this bike i think it looks great it's got a really nice shape to it i really do like the steep head angle we'll talk about that more in just a second but all of it is just really nicely built now the way that it felt to me was very stable I would love to try this thing out on some serious hills, but what little bit I did get to try, again, very stable. And that comes about because of the wheelbase. Again, we'll talk about that in just a second. But you definitely feel like you're sitting down, you're in the bike, you're not on the bike. That is some of the things I've noticed about different bikes that I have. And this bike, uh, you definitely feel like you're down in it and it's very stable because uh, that wheels out front you, it's kind of an interesting feeling right out front this bike has a 75 degree seat tube angle on it which puts the the rider in a more powerful position uh, whenever you're climbing and just it feels better as you're going down the trail uh, it has a 66 degree head tube angle which gets that that wheel out front more and that's where the stability comes from and I really noticed that on the few descents that I was able to do uh, especially with the dropper seat post that that seat drops out of your way so that as you're going down it just gives you more confidence and you have more control uh, this also interprets into or translates into a longer wheelbase this wheelbase is about 45 and a half inches long which is, makes it more stable. That's where all that comes from. The bike is just longer. When you get a longer bike, uh, you wind up with more stability. On top of that, you have these handlebars that are about 30 and a half inches wide. And those are very comfortable because you have a lot of control whenever you're going through these trails. The next thing I believe that lends to the stability of the bike are the tires. This comes equipped with the Maxxis Minion DHF EXO on the front, as well as the Maxxis Aggressor EXO on the back. Both of these tires are 2.5, uh, so they're nice and wide, and they're very grippy. Uh, my neighbor, who rides bikes all the time, mountain biker, he says these aren't the fastest rolling tires, but they're very grippy, and so they're going to give you a lot of confidence. Now, they're mounted on Giant's AM alloy wheels, and these wheels are 30 millimeters inner so in other words that way the there's not a lot of tire flex so there's a nice wide rim for the tires again give you a lot of confidence in cornerings and things like that both of these wheels are mounted on shimano's boost hubs in the front you have a 15 by 110 and in the back you have a 12 by 148. the components that come on this bicycle are what give it its great value in fact a lot of my friends, when they saw this bike, they thought it was a more expensive bike because of the group set. Now, it is set up with the Shimano 12-speed derailleur uh, with a Shimano 12-speed uh, cassette, and this is a 10 by 51 tooth cassette, so you have a wide range there. I wish we had some bigger hills uh, in the area where I'm at. I would love to see what this thing could do, but I can tell you uh, what little bit I got to try today. Uh, you have plenty of low end to be able to climb. It is paired with a Praxis Cadet Boost crank set. This is a 30 tooth uh, chain ring and it is a press fit. It's a Praxis press fit uh, boost lower bottom bracket. And the other thing too is it's paired with Dior shifters and they got a nice snappy click to them. I will say this, they're a little bit um, finicky. And so even though it's uh, great components, you do need to get it dialed in just right. And once you do, uh, it's gonna be a nice snappy change. So what all that information translates into is that you're going to have lots of range whenever you're out on the trails, whether you have some very steep ascents or if you're on the flats or anything like that, you have plenty of range. What little bit I got to try today was a lot of fun. Perhaps one of the most surprising components on this bike is the front fork. This is the Giant Crest 34 RCL. It has 130 millimeters of travel. As I mentioned, it is a 15 by 110 boost. It is a through axle. It does have a lockout on it as well as a rebound adjuster. I was very impressed with this, this front fork today. I, again, I don't know if I had it set exactly right for my weight, 
but I was very impressed with how much it dampened over the roots and things like that. Now I have seen a few videos that they talk about there's some clicking issues with this. I didn't have that issue today and some other people are still a little bit skeptical of the fork, but everything that I've experienced, I, it just, it looks nice and it works nice and I don't know more what you could ask. So apparently Giant now doing its own fork. Typically they use Suntour and things like that. So now we have a Giant Crest fork and uh, this thing's pretty cool. One more great quality component that's on this bike are the brakes. This is matched up with Tektro TKD 143 hydraulic disc brakes. You have a, a two piston caliper on the front and the back matched up with 180 millimeter uh, rotors on this. Now that's great because whenever you're dealing with descents, especially when you get into very steep descents, uh, those 180 millimeter rotors are going to come in handy to be able to dissipate that heat and be able to give you that stopping power. What well, little bit I got to use today, uh, was I was never worried about the brakes. The brakes were solid and so a really nice feature on this bike. All right, and some of the last features that I want to talk about on this bike that make it, uh, again, just little details that make such uh, good quality and gives it such value is things like, for example, you have these extra bosses on the bottom uh, for your water bottles or if you're carrying tools or anything like that. Uh, this also comes with the very comfortable saddle. It's uh, the Giant Romero saddle. Uh, I wore this with both bike shorts and just regular shorts. Very comfortable. In fact, uh, I was very impressed with the saddle. I also like the fact that this particular bike comes with the Jaguar cabling. Uh, in fact, all of the cable, the way it's housed and the way it enters in and comes back out, all seems to be very clean and, and serviceable. And then this quick release seat post adjuster is wonderful too. So all kinds of little things about this bike just make it such a great quality bike. Well guys, there you have it. I hope this has been an informative bike review for you that will help you in your decision whether or not you're going to buy this bike. I can tell you this, if you're looking for a hardtail trail bike, I just don't know how you could get a better value than this. If you're like me, for example, and you want to move up to the next level without breaking the bank or, or the budget, perhaps this is the bike for you. I know that you would certainly get a lot of value for your money. And if you like content like this, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button or that like button. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. And we'll try to make uh, more videos like this. And once again, a big thank you to our local bike shop, Truly Spoken. If you're interested in this bike, be sure and go down and see Mark or Christy or any of the crew there. And they'll take very good care of you and make sure that you get good service and a good quality bike. Hey, and tell them Troy sent you. And we'll see you in the next video.